150,000 times rarer than diamond, this gem can be found in a beehive. What? This gem can be found in a beehive? I don't really know. So, let's see what it is. If you guys recognize what I am pulling out of here, these are red barrels. And red barrels come from Utah. And if you're wondering why I don't hesitate when I say red barrels come from Utah, that's because the only place on earth that red barrel is commercially produced is in Wawa Mountains, Utah. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay, I have now been informed Utah is the beehive state. Ah! <laughs> so we've got faceted red barrel, a single crystal of red barrel, and a very nice red barrel in matrix. It's actually a little bit doubly terminated, so that's pretty nice. Red barrel was discovered in 1904 by Maynard Bixby. They're found at Maynard's Mine in the Thomas Range in Utah. You guys may be wondering like why they're so tiny. And that's because most red barrels are exceedingly small. Like this is considered very large. So these guys form in rhyolites. So this is actually a piece of rhyolite, which is volcanic glass. They had beryllium transported through them and it combined with other elements within them to help create our red barrel. It is the only red member of the barrel family. And it is actually colored by manganese three plus. So you see a lot of fractures and things like that in those crystals. It's because naturally red barrels are super fractured and super cracked and things like that. They have a lot of inclusion. Emeralds are really well known for having jardine, which is all their inclusions. Emeralds are also another type of barrel. Sometimes red barrels are actually called red emeralds. It's a really weird discussion and like there's this whole red emerald thing in the gem and mineral community. It's usually a big faux pas to call one material, so say emerald, by another name. So you wouldn't call it green aquamarine. That's usually like a bad idea. People in the trade will often call something by the species name of a more valuable material. But in this case, one carat of red barrel is much more pricey than one carat of the same quality of emerald. And so people don't really like it, but it's technically allowable because you are saying that it is the red version of a less valuable material rather than trying to fool people into thinking it's a more valuable material. These guys are super duper rare, 150,000 times more rare than diamond. Well, when you are mining these guys, it takes one ton of ore to find one and a quarter carats of red barrel with only a 10% yield. And that's because of how highly fractured they are. You can tell that most of that actual crystal right there is highly fractured and there's a very small portion of it that is actually jimmy. That's pretty typical for red barrel crystals. So that means that a faceted stone of red barrel per ton is only going to be 0.125 carats. So, okay, if you guys can think of a ton, 2,000 pounds of rock, all moved to find this. Teeny, teeny, tiny. That's kind of mind blowing, isn't it? So, you guys may have heard of, a lot of people call it Bixbite. So, it's actually been a discredited name and there's a really good reason for that. And it's because there's another mineral that Mr. Maynard Bixby discovered and it's actually named after him. And it is called Bixbyite. The Bixbyite is actually these black cubes. It is a manganese oxide because Bixbyite was discovered first they decided that it would be way too confusing to have both minerals from basically right next door to each other named after the same guy. So they decided to officially call this red barrel. Do you find these in jewelry at all? It's actually more common to find synthetic red barrel in jewelry than it is to find natural red barrel in jewelry. You can find them, but it's, it's really more like a specialty. Okay, next box. I know there's a few Pretty cool things in Utah. A rock hound's paradise is this mountain named after me. Topaz! 
We have Topaz from Topaz Mountain. So yes, the mountain is named after Topaz. It's actually located really close to the original Maynard's mine. So it's all part of the same mountain range, the Thomas Mountains. What's really cool about these is they are some of the most gorgeous topaz crystals that I have come across. They grow in this rhyolite. They can have just the most gorgeous jimmy terminations to them. A lot of them will almost like look faceted. And you guys can see like how absolutely water clear that termination is. He just does not look real, but it's all 100% natural. Topaz Mountain really is a rock hound's dream because you can, in fact, go pay to go dig on several different claims. Truthfully, from what I've seen on the internet, like you're going to find something. It's one of those places that just historically produces a lot of mineral specimens. What's really neat is these actually form in like what are called like gas cavities. So as that rhyolite was cooling, the gas basically created a cavity that these topazes were later able to be formed in. And so when you go mine those places, you take pickaxes and chisels and all sorts of stuff, and you have to like break the rock open to find the crystals inside. And I think that's like really cool and really neat. They're what is considered like a, an American classic locality. Oh, I'd love to go to Topaz Mountain. Getting to break open rocks all day would be like a dream. I would break the crap out of rocks. Yeah, that's definitely on my bucket list. Oh, wow, we get Jumbo Box. My color is delicious. I don't know, I think all the ones we've seen so far are pretty edible looking. Red Barrel looks like some kind of raspberry flavored thing. And Topaz is like a nice cognac. Hmm. So we actually have two different rocks here. This green mineral is called Verisite. It can look stupidly similar to turquoise to the point that you pretty much have to test it if you want to tell the difference. You may not think that in the shape that it is now, but if you saw a cabochon of this stuff, some of it can look really similar. Verisite can be ranges of green, like this apple-y color, to more of this like minty color with hints of blue in it. They usually are nodules, they're usually round. But here we have a seam. This one has qualities that also look very similar to what is in the aqua range. And the aqua range is very famous for one mine in particular. The material from the super famous mine is known for having these rinds around their verisite, and it's usually made of, I think it's like crandallite and wardite. The wardite is more of this like white stuff, and then the crandallite is like this bigger, more brownish rind around it. If you see a piece of verisite that looks like this, it's basically from the little green monster verisite mine. It began operation in late 1930s, and basically produced all these super famous slices and eventually they pretty much ran out of material. It was reclaimed. The government went through and they bulldozed everything and basically just sloped it off so it matched everything around it and just let it grow back over, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing that they did a good job. It's a bad thing because now it's hard to find this stuff. Well, we are going to move on to our final Utah mineral. This is Tiffany stone. Now, this is actually not a single mineral. It is, in fact, a rock. So because of how delicious people felt that it looked, it was often called ice cream stone. It comes from one location in the United States, and it comes from an active beryllium mine. And unfortunately, this mine does not deem this really cool, really neat stone to be important enough, or how do we say, economically valuable enough to say, save it from being crushed up. This Tiffany stone actually contains a lot of beryllium. And so essentially what they do is they go through and they crush it and melt it for beryllium. Nobody's really sure how it came to be named Tiffany stone. Tiffany stone is made up of a lot of different minerals. So there's fluorite, calcite, dolomite, opal, chalcedony, and then what contains the beryllium is a mineral called bertrandite. It actually fluoresces. So it's actually not the purple that's really fluorescing, which I find funny. Cause I essentially have no idea what's fluorescing in this. 
The green makes me think uranium. There are mines for uranium ores in the Thomas range. You can have like very, very teeny, 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 teeny traces amounts of uranium to the point that it gives it a glow, but it's not affecting you any more than say eating a banana would. Cause yeah, by the way, potassium is radioactive. When you eat too many bananas, you can slightly make yourself radioactive. It takes a lot of bananas. Like you might actually die eating that many bananas. So this is a classic American gem that you will only find in Utah. Before we leave today, I want you guys to take a closer look at this topaz. So I was told to have you guys take a look at the red barrel, but I am just absolutely in love with this topaz crystal because it just amazes me that nobody actually faceted this thing. And the other cool thing is, is that topaz is actually Utah's state gemstone. So Utah is a really awesome state, but we are far from finished with our Gems Across America series. So why don't you all tell me which state you want to see next in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And thank you guys for watching.